Blog Talk Radio. All praises, all praises to our Elohai, our Elohim, Yahweh Shai, earthly mother, the spirit of truth. Much love to our nation and to the strangers who cleave to us. So tonight, I want it to be known because I've had some comments regarding, you know, people who call themselves Gentiles um, come in and, you know, have conversation. It's been good conversation, nothing negative. But I want people to understand, especially these that we call Gentiles today, if you come to our channels and you say, hey, you know, I am a Gentile, then why should we listen to you? Why should we entertain you? Because it would make more sense that you would come and say, hey, I used to be a Gentile, but now I am cleaving to Israel. Because the reality is, if you're a Gentile, you can't be trusted. And I get it. You know, you've heard this word over and over and over again, and and people say it, brothers and sisters say it, and I say it, you know. Um, But you have to realize that we're in a different age now, and you have to step up, step, 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 step up. You've got to be able to. Uh, Roll with us because we're not stopping. Ain't no stopping us now. We ain't half stepping. We're not coming. We are not in this walk to bring pillows, comforters. Um, We're not in this to bring ice cream. We're not in this to bring softness. We are not hateful people. Although it would be deservedly so if we were, hence the camps, because rightfully so, you get what you give, what you've given off. And I know people go, well, I didn't do nothing. Well, you know, at the end of the day, you know, talk to your parents about that. Now, when I say talk to your parents, I'm not talking to those whose parents are us. I'm saying talk to the parents. You know, I look at my demographic who listens to these lessons, and a lot of them are in between the ages of 45 and 65. So that means that many of us that uh, are, many that listen are, you know, babies of the 60s, 70s, 60s and 70s, you know, some into the 80s, early 80s, but majority 60s and 70s and some 50s, late 50s. So if you ask my parents, what did they, what, what, how they, what was happening during their time, they will tell you that white people were not nice. They were, matter of fact, they were very hateful. And then if you ask my grandparents, they will tell you, hey, very hateful. Then they ask their parents, very, very hateful. And it goes on very, 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 very hate, 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 hate. So we're not coming at this from a hate perspective. We are coming up, uh, coming at this from a tough love situation. It's tough love. Because, you know, we're not here to, again, we're not here to bring pillows and sugar coat. And, you know, no, we're here to bring truth because we're, we're working in the, in the spirit of truth. You know, yeah, you, if you don't want to cleave, you want to cleave to, uh, Yahweh Shai, so be it. But if you're not cleaving to Yahweh Shai's people, then you're not cleaving to Yahweh Shai. You are still a Gentile. It's like it's like when I was a Christian, I went into the Christian church and I said, I am a Christian and I believe in white Jesus and I cleave to white Jesus and his people. It'd be foolish or 
it, it would be unthinkable to cleave to white Jesus and not try to cleave to his people. Now, even though growing up there was it was it was separations and such, but the reality was that I felt, and I'm sure many, we that we had to deal with white people as well as deal with white Jesus. Now it's 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 come full circle. It's circum circumspect. Now the reality is is that that white Jesus and that church madness is just that madness. And now you're realizing, or if maybe 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 not, I don't know. But if you're here, then <clears throat> to some degree, the Father has opened your ears and eyes to say, "Hey, listen and see." So you see that it's no longer a white Jesus thing. It's now a Negro, a Hebrew, an Israelite thing, a, a so-called dark Jesus, a ruddy, a swarthy Yahweh Shai. Therefore, if that is the case, then it would only make sense through common sense alone logic and reason, that you would say, oh, well, you know what? If Yahweh Shai is swarthy, then I would need to deal with the people who are swarthy saying they are his people. So you can't cleave to one without the other. That's just reality. And why do I say that? Because we're not out here hating on white people. That's 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 as that is as ignorant as that is as ignorant with the same ignorant as energy as your parents, 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 parents brought to our parents, 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 parents. That is not where we're at. We're not hating white people ignorantly for the color of their skin. The one thing that they have had no control over. Why in the filth flan would I give two rats' asses about your color rather than your actions? And so we are now, as we are judges, oh, only God can judge me. Are you sure you want only you, you will want the most high to judge you, or would you rather want his people to judge you so you can self reflect, self convict and self correct? Now than to be in front of the Father being judged. See, again, this logic has to be in tune with the truth, with the facts of the matter. Again, we're not hating people because they're white. We're hating people for their actions. And hate is a good word to use. It's a good word to use against evil, against wickedness, against reprobate heathenistic mindsets, Gentile mindsets. Now, what do I mean by that? What is it that we have problems with? What is it that we hate? We hate colonization. Colonization. Say it with me. Colonization is what we hate. Because the justice, or rather the injustice, of colonization is what is happening, is what is the justice that is being brought forth today. And now, see, white folks, they may look at that and be like, well, you know, I don't know, it was so long ago, I didn't, listen, my people, and we're going to get into something here, my people, one, never hated people because of their skin. My people never cut a person because of their skin, never whipped a person because of their skin, never created laws, three-fifths of a man, never said, never dehumanized a person because of their skin, never created laws against people for their skin, never colonized people and lands for their bounty due to their skin color. Never went around our earth talking about doctrines of discovery. Never said manifest destiny. Never created dumb diverses against people for their skin and their bounty. 
their treasures. We, we never did that. Matter of fact, whenever we were warring against others, we're going to get to that, whenever we were warring against others, other nations that were coming against us, when those nations, people, after, after we destroyed their kings and their, 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 their generals and their, their mighty men, the people would rent their clothes and say, hey, you know, have mercy on us. We would, we would show mercy. We would get, show mercy, not destroy them, kick them off the land, and we would purify our land again. But that never happened with white people. In recent times and in, mid, in the, in the um, middle age after ancient times, never happened. They will go in, colonize a place, destroy a place, kill everything, pervert everything, uh, 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 lay waste to everything, take it over, burn it, leave the people that they destroyed and, and mutilated in heaps so that everyone around that came into that city would see that and be in fear. That's the history of colonization. Now, what's the beginning of colonization, one may ask? Well, when did this all begin? We, 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 let, let me tell you. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. Now, Alexander the Great and the, and the Medes and the Persians were fighting each other. Alexander the Great won out over Darius, over the Medes. And he ransacked and colonized all of that area. Now, this is the Greeks. This is after Rome fell the first time. Okay. This is when Rome was building itself back up before Rome took over Greece after, you know, treasonous, uh, its treasonous ways against its own people. That's why we hate colonization. Why? Because it, it, it is pure treachery. And when we watch even today, Ish running around trying to colonize, it just fits, it's, it fits the M.O. of colonization. Fits the M.O. of white people. And then they go, well, not all white people. Listen, it doesn't matter. It's not, it doesn't matter when, it, you know, we can't sit there and say, oh, we can't say, we can't pick and choose the percentages of white people or black people or Asian people or yellow people or red people. No, we can say based on history story, his hyphen story, that all, and, it, and, it, and all white people gained from colonization, all. And they go, well, you know, it was the businessmen, it was, it was the kings, it was the government. Listen, again, and this is not to hate white people, because there's no hate in white people. We, listen, we all were colonized. We got colonized. And white people got colonized. This is the reality. They got colonized with the lie. We got colonized with the lie and the death and the violence. That is the mystery of iniquity. What is the mystery of iniquity? It is the four hundred. It is the two thousand years of silence once white people took over Jerusalem. But lo and behold, there is a book that explains it historically, explains exactly what happened, and it explains all of the colonization and the, and the activities and the ways and the, and the, um, and the motives and the uh, apparatuses that were used against Israel and the Judeans the whole house thereof. And so when people come and they want to talk to talk about oh well you know you guys are you guys are racist. Listen, that nobody is there's no racist here. There's no power here from we 
the Israelite, Negroes. There's none of that here. There's no races here. We're just dealing with truth and facts of the matter, the evidence. And see, it's funny because 2019, you know, the big stink, uh, even before, right, a couple of years before, what, 2017, the big stink was uh, oh, uh, CRT. Now, why the hell would you need CRT if you weren't trying to cover up things, if you weren't trying to hide things, if you didn't know that your his hyphen story was full of colonization, you know? And then again, you got Ish over here colonized and trying to colonize. Matter of fact, they've colonized the world through their media, through the, with their money. And, and that's the thing, you know, People want to talk about. Let, let, let me let me digress for a second. You want to talk about uh, student loans and debt and all. Listen, we Negroes went into great debt to go to edu- to be miseducated by white people, never to talk about who we are, uh, never to tell us what we've done, giving us half a month. You know, no information on our attributes, attributions to world to to world his hyphen story. But now that we're we we now that's in the rear view, we now realize that that wasn't the it, that's the mystery of iniquity. White people's history, the mystery of iniquity, because. They do not want they do not want us to realize how far back colonization goes. They don't want us to realize that these lands are ours. So let's do a quick definition check real quick. Quick definition check. Colonization. The act of taking control of an area or a country that is not your own, especially using force and sending people from your own country to live there, the colonization of the world. Wait a minute. Oxford Learner's Dictionary. So I'm not making it up. Oxford, this is the British. This is what they, because they were the kings and queens of doing this. But, I mean, that sounds awfully like what happened over here. You know, you got uh, the, the Dutch going trying to colonize South Africa, talking about, well, this is our country, this is our land, my grandparents. Listen, you're not South African. That is not your original place. You came as a colonizer. Maybe you aren't a colonizer now. Maybe in the fourth generation since you colonized, your, you know, your great, 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 let me get it right, your great, 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 great grandparents were the colonizers, and now you're not, and now you're benefiting, and now you're like, wow, you know, this is my land too. And the people, the original people are like, get off my land. And you're like, well, because I remember back in the 80s, it was like, if you don't love America, you can leave it. What? Why would I leave my land? And same with the South Africa. Why would they leave their land? Same with the Australians. Why would they leave their land? Same with the uh, the uh, the Caledonians. The Caledonians. Why would they leave their lands? I mean, all all of this is just like when they were like telling um, Garvey was like, "Oh, let's all go back to Africa." It's it's interesting because Liberia, <sighs> Liberia. Was formed. <laughs> Liberia was formed by the American Colonial Colonization Society. That's what the, that, that's why Sierra Leone was going through all of that mess, all the madness in the early eighties and nineties and seventies, because because they were being colonized via people who weren't even supposed to be there, weren't even supposed to be there. 
everything that has gone on over the last 2000, uh, let's just, let's just, you know, since 70 AD, since Rome came on the scene has been colonization. Since Greece came on the scene has been colonization. Everything. And we're sick of colonization. We are sick and tired. And yet that's something that we hate. Because it has done a number on our people. It has made people who, uh, you know, uh, let me go back. Colonization is a process of establishing control over foreign territories of people for the purpose of exploitation and possible settlement, setting up coloniality and often colonies commonly pursued and maintained. Colonialism. So, I mean, you know, colonialism, colonization begats your capitalism, get, begats your racism. You, you, you hear the you hear the suffix. Colonialization creates all the isms, and who created colonialization? And then people, well, you know, everybody went around the earth and no, they didn't. That's not true. That is an excuse given to the fourth generation so that they can believe that their people were not evil as fuck. Seriously. It is ridiculous to this day for any, and it's, (laughs) I digress because and that was a little flamboyant for me because, you know, I'm tired. I'm, you know, I, I sit here and I listen. I, I look at, you know, the the le- le- Learys and the Stones and the Jakes and the and the um, and the uh, Olsteins and all these young evangelical people, and they do not talk about historical truths. They want to act like they want to pontificate on spiritualism without giving you the historic truth of spiritualism. Spirituality is nothing but a culture. It's a culture. It is a culture of keeping commandments, keeping laws. I mean, if I hear another white person talking about the laws are done away with, or a black person that the laws are done away with, See, that's black and white. Those are the people, and and I got to digress again. You know, it's something to what the Dominicans have said. They say they are not black. We say we are not black. Everybody wants us to be black. As if my deep, rich, swarthy, dark, red skin is black. Are you mad? As if your pale pink uh, uh, paste color is white. What is this? The mentality has to change. That is a Gentile mindset. But the good news is, to the Gentile, is you can break free of that yoke. You can get away from the yoke of ignorance. Now. The heathen, on the other part, it's harder for the heathen because they are full of idolatry. Now, Gentiles are too, but they can be broken of it as long as they understand to cleave to us because we are the ones telling the truth. You think that we're making this stuff up? I mean, you ain't heard it. You ain't heard none of this stuff in ever coming from us. Ever as bold and as strong as we say it today, as convicted as we say it today, with the zeal that we say it today. You don't hear that? And I mean, if brothers and sisters, if, if, if you don't know what you need to do to clean your house, I, I don't know what to tell you. Gentiles, if you don't know what to do to clean your house, I don't know what to tell you. We've gone 10 years now, 70 years now, explaining everything that we could explain. 
Because, shoot, we don't know at all. But what we know is white people have been lying. That is the facts, Jack. That's it. Like, at the, at the, at the, at the, <laughs> at the end of the day, the rulers of this world have been lying. Has it been the Negro? Mm-mm. Nope. Ain't been me. I shoot y'all. Shoot, I was three fifths a man considered. Probably still am on the book somewhere. They they made sundown sundown times for me. I got to hightail it out before I get lynched, before I get cut up, sliced up, diced up, and eaten. Before my babies get 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 fed to the dogs, to the beasts. Before my house gets burned. See, white people, you guys think that all that is just in the past. And that, that, see, what, what you what you don't understand is whenever a wrong is not righted, it keeps coming back over and over because it must be righted. It must be righted. Again, it must. Be right it. This is the beauty of karma. You think justice will sleep forever? You guys, the Gentiles, the heathens, black and white, but more specifically white people have to realize their error. And you know what? I, I do see some realizing their error. I do see some um wanting to do the right thing and treat people properly, but they stop short of going all in on and with the truth. They stop short. I had one dude on TikTok going back and forth with me, and I'm like, why are you going back and forth with me? Like, I don't even, I'm not even entertaining this. And I said, listen, I know who I am. You can't tell me who I am. Who are you? I, I've already told you that we are the Hebrews by ethnicity and Israelite through culture. Well, I've known that for a long time. What? Oh, that's interesting that you've known this. Which, see, so the logic is today, logic and reason today is pure truth. Let's get everything on the put everything on the table and let's let's make this work. If the father if it's the father's will. Now, the father's will, some people say that some people would disagree with me on this, but the father to me, based on what I my my studies, the father's will is the good and the bad because they both have to they both have to work together to be able to purify each other. But if the if the if the bad never acknowledges its own faults, well, it's it's a, it's a rift, and that's where we are. We're in this rift until white people get their shit together. We already know the end game is you're going to come and say, "Hey, we've inherited lies." We already know that deception is is what we have to be what we have to look out for. So whenever you guys are trying to come talk about our scriptures that that were stolen from the get go, stolen from that was that was sacked and stolen from us. Now you want to pontificate to us about our our, our scriptures without the spirit of truth? Listen, we 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 see you. We know this, and we're humble, but we're not going to put up with madness, and, and this is the historical facts. Our people never put up with the madness of the Gentiles, even, even when we were in the madness with the Gentiles. We never put up with it until the madness overtook us, and then we became three-fifths of man. And well, man, then we were able to be buck broke, raped, you know, destroyed, poisoned, you know. It's funny. I never see much history in regards to our people. All I ever see 
is light skinned white people for for his slash story and our slash story. So the father said, see that son is the mystery of iniquity. Because your story, my story, is a mystery to the heathen, European, the Khazarian, Germanic, Indo-Europeans' history. So if, if my, my story is the mystery, then I need, to, I need to bring my story to the forefront. If my story has the truth with it, then I need to bring my story to the forefront. And I ain't mad at anybody. And, and, and don't mistake my zeal for truth and law and justice to be hate. My parents weren't out there getting spit on and, and, and doo-dooed on and shit on and everything else at, at, the, at the, trying to eat, trying to go to school. See, this is the thing, white people. You guys need to go talk to your people about y'all's actions, not come to us. Why is y'all, why, why, why are you coming out of my, because I'm tired of seeing all this craziness, one, in your, under dirt, under your rule, in, a, in the world that I got to, I got to live in. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it on my land. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of seeing all this madness. Everywhere I look around, it's nothing but hoes. Then, then they want to. They, then they, then they think people dumb. And oh well, I, the Iran uh, president w- w- could could be. It was an accident. Now, are you crazy? These people are murderers. This is their mo. This is what they've been doing. Now let's get into it. So we're gonna we're gonna check out Maccabees because see. What, what people don't seem to understand is this is the history in between. So, so Alexander the Great, he goes to Persia, Medo-Persia, conquers, colonizes, then he dies. Twelve years he did. He went. He, he, he for twelve years he did this colonization thing. Then he dies and he gives all of his land that he gave that he colonized to his to his boys. His generals. His generals then wanted Egypt and Jerusalem and Judea. This is what Anti Antiochus wanted. Okay? Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes is what he wanted. Okay? And and we're gonna read a little history of Maccabees real quick. The first book of Maccabees is his is historical work uh extant in Greek covering the period of 40 years from the accession of Antiochus Epiphanes to the death of Simeon the Hasmonean. Its name in the Septuagint and in the writings of the church of of the Gentile fathers, Eusebius and Clement, is Ta Maccaba, i.e. Maccabean Matters, or the Book of Maccabees, okay? The original Hebrew name of the book is unknown according to, to origin. It was Sarbeth Sabanel. Sabanel. Different hypotheses have been suggested to explain these words, which should perhaps read Sefer Biet Servani El, the words Servani El, who strive for God or who strive for Elohim, being a translation into contemporary Mishnatic. Mishnatic Hebrew of Hebrew of Jehorib, the name of the priestly order to which the Hasmonean family belonged. In support of this conjecture is the fact that in later times, after the glamour of the Hasmonean dynasty had been tarnished, the name Jehor, Jehorib is found translated by the above word in its Aramaic form, Mazari, though it is though it is there used in a pejorative sense as rebellious or fractious. First Maccabees is the main and at times the only historical source for the, pre- for the period. Now let me time out real quick. I'm not against white people, but at the end of the day, they have to be called to the carpet. They got to be called out. 
Because this is not under my rule. None of this shit has happened under Negro rule. This has been white people rule. Biden and Trump, they don't look like me. This has nothing to do with my, my, my people. Has absolutely nothing to do with my people. This is the rulership of white people, Europeans, Khazarian, Germanic, Indo Europeans. So for when 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 they want when when the, when the heathens and the Gentiles want to get into their their uh, religious mode and start talking about oh well I know you know Jesus is going to come back who do you think he's coming back to do to do who do you think justice is coming for you think they're coming for the people that's been oppressed you think they're coming for the people who are trying to work the truth who are trying to live in the truth who's trying to seek the Father and live by his laws? Are you crazy? Who do you think justice is coming for? See, the delusion of white people and some Negroes who call themselves black, they are in for a rude awakening. See, our awakening is nice. The 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 burden is light. The white people's burden will be heavy. Why? Because white man's burden. They, they, they you got they called it the white man's burden. Hold on. Let me and I'm gonna get back to this real quick. As Victor what is the white man's burden? And this this is why it's gonna be heavy on white people, because it's don't say the black man's burden. Uh, we we didn't write this. As Victorian imperial poetry, the white man's burden thematically Corresponded to Kipling, because Rudyard, Rudyard, Rudyard Kip, Kipling, white man, came up with this. Kipling's belief that the British Empire was the Englishman's divine burden to reign God's empire on earth. And celebrates British, drum roll please, colonialism as a mission of civilization that eventually would benefit the colonized Natives, the white man's bird. That yoke is heavy. It's like a millstone. That's why if white people who call themselves Gentiles or white people who want to cleave, they have to come correct. They have to stand up correct. They have to acknowledge what their his hyphen story is about. What their people did and be good with us being let go. Because we're no longer we, we're no longer yoked, we're no longer attached. That's what this is all about. That's why people are going, Oh, I want to go to uh, uh, uh we gotta vote. I mean, we gotta vote for no, we don't. What the hell are you talking about? If no one votes, you think that's going to send a – will that send a different – will that send the message? And, and and better yet, go talk to these pastors and priests who the, – these these evangelical white people and these black people who get up there and pontificate nonsensical nonsense every Sunday. Get up and talk to them. Why? Because those are the bigger, biggest grifters in the world. They take your money tax-free. And then you guys, and then white people are crying about the, the, the government, the government, the government. No, your churches are taking your money, right? Taking your money, my money, well, not my money, because I don't go to these jokers. But they go to, they take your money, tax-free, pay themselves, and give the rest to ish. Then, then they, the, the government taxes all of us, takes our money, Pays themselves some and gives the rest to Ish. So where where how how is Ish a downtrodden, oppressed people needing salvation? The hell kind of salvation do they need? 
And what 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 what, what kind of what kind of sense does the Christian church make stealing from its people and giving to the rich? So Gentiles, white people, heathens alike, if you want to be down, you need to come correct and be down. Outside of that, you know, don't 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 come. Don't don't step to our channels. We don't care. We're not entertaining. We're not here to entertain. Are you entertained? First Maccabees is the main and at times the only historical source for the period. The book opens with the conquest of Alexander the Great, but immediately after this relates activities to Antiochus, Epiphanes, and the Jewish Hellenizers, whom the author calls the sons of Bilal, the reprobates, and summarily reviews the causes of the Hasmonean Rebellion. From this point on, it gives a more detailed account of the events of, of the Matthias Mate, revolt through the re rededication of the temple down to the time when John Harkanus, the eldest son of Simon, the Hasmonean, was appointed ruler. Now, the, the eldest son is the last, because so Rome, Ptolemy, which is the Hamites, uh, Rome went through like like when you read all the way through this the the first book of Maccabees, which is a fantastic historical read. When you read it, what you what you will begin to understand is that each time that the Israelites were still and quiet and 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 reveling within their own land. Here comes the Hamites and here comes the Japhites. Here comes Rome. Here comes uh, 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 Egypt coming against them. The Arabs coming against them. The Ishmaelites coming against them. The Canaanites coming against them. Okay? Now, we can, we can also say, well, you know, could that have happened over here in the Americas? Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Okay? Maybe. Because they didn't get any of this information until after they came from the Americas. They created these Bibles. They start writing all this stuff. They start creating these books. They start reading, being able to read the scrolls. So reality is, is that white people, Gentiles, and heathens alike, you've been lied to. Your idols are wood and stone, ain't Jack Boone. Nothing. Like spittle. That's why I'll be laughing. I'll be laughing. Just like the father's laughing, <clears throat> I'll be laughing. On TikTok or Instagram or, or you know, Facebook doesn't do it. But TikTok, normally, I'm sitting there laughing, listening to these people trying to talk about scriptures without any spirit of truth. No, not one. And then the ones that are coming with some semblance of truth, they're, they're, clean, they're connected to us. <laughs> They're connected to us. They're starting to understand, oh, well, shoot, these people, is it's nothing like I was taught. I've been lied to. And we ain't done nothing but start talking the truth. Matter of fact, we have done nothing but talk to ourselves, to bring up ourselves. Why? Because white people, Gentiles, and heathens alike, never would help us out. Matter of fact, the Maccabees, after the Maccabees and the exploits of the Maccabees, this is when Psalms 83 comes into play. Psalms 83 comes into play. So when they came together and they were like, yo, we got to do something. Let's just, let's all just get together and do away with these people. Why? Because when you read Maccabees, uh, Judas Maccabee, he was, his exploits, like they, he was doing, he was just putting, he was putting people to work. Like he was putting that work on them. He was killing them. He was doing feats that they had never seen before. There's your Avengers. We the original Avengers. There's your X-Men. All of the Maccabees. Because the way that they were doing things, the way that they were, the, the things that they were creating, because they were talking about they were creating engines to go against 
to, to go against uh, Ptolemy, to go against Rome. What Rome would do was act like they were boys. Hey, you know, listen, because remember, Rome was just coming up. They hadn't gotten, they hadn't gotten big yet again. Rome was like, hey, you know, here's some gold and we boys, why don't you come and holler at me? You know, this is just what we're going to do, you know, I, you know, and, and, and as soon as they go over there, they kill them. The breaking treaties. I mean, this is the MO of the history. No wonder they took this out of the, uh, and let, let me get, let me keep going. The many expressions in the Greek, let me, let me see. Now, I'm just going to read this and we're going to get into it. The original Hebrew version seems to have disappeared quite early. Hmm. Imagine that. The church included First Maccabees in its canon together with the rest of the Septuagint, and this was ratified by the Catholic Church Council of Trent. After the Reformation, the Protestants, oh, well, I'm a Protestant, that Catholic Church is the devil. Well, after the Reformation, the Protestants removed it from their Bible and relegated it to the Apocrypha. <laughs> they all went in the same. That's what I keep saying. Like, like, if you're coming with any Constantine Christianity ideology, you're against us. You're against us. I mean, it's simple as that. You're 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 against not only us, not only Hamashiach, not only the Father, not only the earthly mother, the heavenly mother, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. But you're you're against your own selves. You can show some, and people go, well, uh, you you talk about the Holy Spirit is a, is a woman, you know. I I understand what what <laughs> what you be talking about now, <laughs> but if you're as ignorant as that to to make that statement, then you are not ready for this. Because if you think that as above so below means that there's three men, when we got families down here in creation. Man, woman, child, you're ignorant, period. You're ignorant. And you don't read. It's an interesting thing about reading. We're the only people on the face of this earth that was told you can't read, that would be murdered to read, and now we're reading, and you trying to tell us that we ain't reading right? Get the get out of here. We know what we're talking about. We know what we're talking about. We know who we are. <laughs> We we know who we're talking about. We know who we are. And we don't have time for that. And again, this ain't nothing about hate. Ain't nobody hating nobody. We ain't got time for hate. We are so far beyond hate that it that the zeal that we bring to the table, many of us, the zeal, the flamboyant talk, the 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 uh the the um the communications, the uh, high energy, the, uh, the, the, the truth just in itself sets people free to be able to talk in any kind of way to communicate because, again, we're talking to our own. Something again, uh, if there's a group of them, they got to go to jail because they can't hang out together. This was your laws. These were your laws. Now we're talking amongst each other. Ain't nobody, look, ain't nobody scared no more. Ain't nobody scared. Gentiles are just foolish. They're a foolish nation, truly a foolish people. And for a minute, if, if, if for, for a second, if you want, if you think that you, <laughs> if you think that we believe that Ish is the people, you're ignorant again. Why? Because their actions speak louder than their words. Their actions. Even 9-11, they, they, they told you that they did it. Excited, jumping up and down. It's it filmed. I mean, listen, the MO of these people who rule this earth is by any means necessary murder. 
The whole the whole TV, everything on, on their TV is about killing, stealing, and destroying. Or hoeing. The music, same thing. Their books, their novels, same thing. Matter of fact, I needed to say this too. There is, uh, I did, I did, I, I get my books from A Books, Abe, A B E Books. These folks have all the books because they're getting these books from Australia. The Australians are willing to part with their collection, their collectibles of books. And I just got, hold on. Wait a I haven't even opened it yet. This book came from this book came from Black uh, J. Orton Black Stump Books, Thirty One Lion Street, Skipton, Victoria, Australia. The Lost Tribes from Outer Space. And the cool thing is, is they got the originals. And I, I paid 50 bucks. I could have paid less, but I wanted it in 10 days because I didn't know what would happen. If I didn't, let's go ahead and get it. But I got mine. The Lost Tribes from Outer Space. And I will do my due diligence on that. All praises. But th- this, this is what I'm saying. Like we've got enough. We, we are, we are, we are, we are stocked with intelligent people. We have doctors. We have lawyers. We have uh, businessmen, businesswomen. We have um, educators, uh, philosophers. We've got. Um, uh, you know, students. We've got every every type of person hungry for wisdom. Because if nothing else, you got to get understanding in order to get wisdom. And the whole thing is, white people don't want understanding because to get understand. Well, and I apologize. Not all want understanding. Only a few want understanding. And if those few make it to this to the, to our uh, our channels, our stations, our broadcasts, so be it. Read, read with us. Be part of our nation. Don't come in acting like you know you're gonna be a rebel. Don't come in acting like you're gonna be over top of or you know more or you got this or you, no. No, we didn't do that with your Christianity. We didn't go to your churches and be like, yo, we know this. We don't, we, don't, we ain't doing that now. We're not, we, with all the knowledge and wisdom that we have today, we're not going into your churches, into your uh, unholy places and saying, you know what? We know this. We know, we're not doing that. We're letting you guys do your thing. Why? Because all things must come to pass. All things must come to pass. And it ain't our business. And some people, well, you know, you don't even need to talk about it. You need to talk about, you know, you need to be, you know, esoteric and talk about Jesus and, or Yahusha, Yahusha. You need to talk about, you need to, you need to be a, 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 a priest. Listen, I'm a warrior. I'm in this fight for real. I'm an agent for the Father. I've been this way for a long time. I ain't tripping. I'm not out here trying to uh, be something I'm not. I'm not out here trying to make things uh, more than they are. To me, it's quite simple. It either is or it is not. It either is, because people go, well, what are you doing? It either is the truth or it is not the truth. I used to wonder, 
And I've said this several times. I used to wonder, why did I go through the miseducation of um, European colleges and universities in history? Why did I do that? Now I know. Now I know. Well, I've been knowing for, for, for a good minute now, but I know now. Because of this time now, I had to have that foundation of that miseducation so that I can tell the truth. I can tell the truth. And can't nobody, you know, can't nobody come and be like, well, you know, no, you know, you, what you're saying isn't true because, no, you can't do that. That's not me boasting. That's all for the. That's all by the Father. That's all by the Spirit. I walk in spirit and truth. I'm out here doing this for the Father by His will only, only. Because if it was my will, I'd be chilling right now. I cut the grass. I'd be sitting back. Cold adult beverage. Looking at TV or something. Or reading this book that I just got. But that's for another day. But today, it's about this truth. It's about, hey, because I do this, I do this once a week because of this. Because I, I got to, it's so much that I want to say, but some things aren't meant to be said. And I, and, 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 and through my studies, like, so I'll start again studying, like I'm going to read this book, and start again studying tomorrow, and then it'll culminate to Wednesday of next week, Father willing. You know, I can't even get into politics because I think it is the most, it is it's full of folly and pure fuckery, really. And it is a waste of my energy. And And, and, and I worked on Capitol Hill. And in the Georgia State Legislature. I know what these people are doing. I know how they think. I'm not sitting here shooting the shit just because, you know, I I, want to go against these people. No, these people are coming against us. We We have had no type of protection until now. So I'm all in now. Shoot, I got my shield. I'm all in. I'm going to tell the truth. I have my shield and my armor and my sword if I need it. But really, I don't even need the sword. I just got a shield because I can I can hold the shield up while people come and talk craziness and, and continue to multitask and do my thing. So we're gonna get into first. We're gonna get into first Maccabees and try to get through chapter one real quick. I wish I could. I wish that you know. I do have it. I have to go to the library. I gotta go. I don't want to go through all that. Hold on a second. Just these people. <sighs> I'm just hold on a sec. Just bear with me. I 
I don't understand why it's so difficult. This is what I'm saying. So, so Gentiles, heathens, and white people alike, why are you making it so difficult to find the truth, to get it online? You know, you, 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 you want to be the people. You say you're the people. You say all white, all white people are, are the ancients and all this stuff, but you hide all this information. You, you make it very difficult. If you were the people, if you were the people, why is your world in disarray, chaotic, and madness? If you were the people, why do you suppress, oppress, and hide the truth? See, this, these are questions to contemplate, to cogitate, because we already know the answer, because we're going, why is it so difficult to find the truth? Then they want to give me the AI. Oh, let let me help you out. No, I don't want your AI. I don't want your AI to help me out. How's that? I don't. I don't. I don't want your AI to help me out. I don't want it. There we go. Why has it got to be all types of advertisements in it? I mean, this is this is what I'm talking about. I just don't want the truth. Truth's just not in you. Where is three eleven? Why is that weird? Why, why? What is this about? That's so wild! Oh my gosh! My pocket feel like I, but I forgot. I'm getting there. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. And it came to pass after the Alexander the 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 great Alexander the Macedonian, the son of Philip, who came out of the land of Chittim and smote Darius, king of the Persians. And needs. Oh my gosh. And needs. It came to pass after he had smitten him that he reigned in his stead in former time over Greece. And he fought many battles and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of all of a multitude of nations. So of the end of the earth, that's the three parts. 
and the the earth was quiet before him, and he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up, and he gathered together an exceeding strong host, that's army, and ruled over countries and nations and principalities, and they began tributary unto him. And after these things he fell sick, and perceived that he should die, and he called his servants, which were honorable, his generals, which had been brought up with him from his youth, and he divided unto them his kingdom. While he was yet alive, and Alexander reigned twelve years, and he died, and his servants bear rule, each one in his place, and they did all put diadems upon themselves after that he was dead. And so did their sons after them many years, and they multiplied evils in the earth, and there came forth out of them a sinful root, Antiochus Epiphanes, son of Antiochus the king, who had been a who had been a hostage of Rome, a hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the 137th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days came, came there forth out of Israel transgressors, transgressors of the law, and persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the Gentiles that are round about us. For since we were parted from them, many evils have befallen us. And And the saying was good in their eyes, and certain of the people were forward herein and went to the king, and he gave them license to do after the ordinance of the Gentiles. And they built a place of exercise in Jerusalem, according to the laws of the Gentiles. And they made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant, and joined themselves to the Gentiles and sold themselves to do evil. And the kingdom was well ordered in the the sight of Antiochus, and he thought to reign over Egypt, that he might reign over two kingdoms. And he entered into Egypt with a great multitude, with chariots and with elephants and with horsemen and with a great navy. And he made war against Ptolemy, king of Egypt. And Ptolemy was put to shame before him and fled. And many fell wounded. Many fell wounded to death. And they got possession of the, of the strong cities in the land of Egypt. And he took the spoils of Egypt. And Antiochus, after that, he had smitten Egypt, returned in the hundred and forty and third year, and went up against Israel and Jerusalem. Israel and Jerusalem. This is the time that the whole house was together still, okay? With a great multitude and entered presumptuously into the sanctuary and took the golden altar and the candlestick of light and all that pertained thereto and the table of the showbread and the cups to pour withal and the bowls and the golden censers. And the veil and the crowns and the adorning of gold, which was on the face of the temple, and he scaled it and he, he scaled it all off. And he took the silver and the gold and the precious vessels, and he took the hidden treasures which he found. And when he had taken all, he went away into his own land. And he made a great slaughter and spake very presumptuously. And there came great mourning upon Israel in every place where they were. And the rulers and elders groaned. The virgins and young men were made feeble. And the beauty of the women was changed. All right, let's time out. Let's 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 unpack some of that. So this is colonization. So they went into Egypt. They went into Jerusalem and and Judah Judah and Ju- and Judea, and they created all this chaos and madness in it. And they destroyed it. They wanted to destroy it. They changed the beauty of the women. Did they not do? And see, so so a lot of Gentiles and white people and heathens alike will say some craziness like, oh, well, that, see, it already happened, none of that stuff. Listen, every, this, the, the way you know who Israel is, true Israel is, is every time that they are oppressed, the same thing happens over and over again. So this is the Greeks. This is when they began to do this thing. They figured it all out. They figured it all out, how, how, to, how to start uh, colonizing the world, their world. The beauty of the women was changed. Every bridegroom took up lamentation. She that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness, and the land was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was clothed with shame. And after two full years, the king sent a chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Judah, And he came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude, and he spake words of peace unto them and subtlety, and they gave him credence, and he fell upon them and the city suddenly and smote it very sore. So there, you see that? What did he say? 
and he spake words of peace. Peace, peace, sudden destruction. And, 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 and isn't that what they did to our people over in the Americas? They came over peace, peace, and then sudden destruction. And that what they did to the to uh, the, the brethren in uh, Spain, peace, peace, sudden destruction, inquisition. Isn't that what they did to all of our people all over the earth? Peace, peace, sudden destruction. Not to them, because it was their blessing. Oh, and that reminds me. Because this is this is this is how you this is why this is colonization this is why right here. When Esau when Esau heard the words of his father he cried out with a great cry and bitter out of measure, and said unto his father, Bless me even me also my father, who answered, Thy brother came with subtlety, and hath taken away thy blessing. Subtlety. So let's go back real quick. Peace unto them in subtlety. Okay, so this is all revenge. This is this is why they've been doing these things because of Esau. Okay, Chittim, Alexander, Chittim, Esau mixed with Chittim. So subtly and had taken away thy blessing. Then he said, Was he not justly called Jacob? For he hath deceived me these two times. He took my birthright, and lo, now he takes my blessing. Also he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? Then Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I made his servants. And with wheat and wine have I furnished him. And unto thee now what shall I do, my son? Then Esau said unto his father, Hast thou not one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me, also my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and cried like a little. Bleh. Then Isaac, Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, the fatness of the earth shall be thy dwelling place, and thou shalt have of the dew of heaven, and thou shalt have of the dew of heaven from above. That means he ain't going to have no, 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 no place. He's going to be nomadic. He's going to go from place to place. All right? He ain't going to have no land. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt thou be thy brother's servant. But it shall come to pass when thou shalt get th get the mastery, it, that thou shalt break his yoke from thy neck. So, Chittim, we're talking Alexander the Great, we're talking the Maccabees, we're talking Greece, we're talking Rome, they're going in against his brother. Even Jasher speaks of it. So, you know, we, 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 we know these things now. We, we know these things now, Okay. And the land, uh, okay, wait. Every bridegroom took up lamentation. She that sat in the marriage chambers was in heaviness, and the land was moved for the inhabitants thereof. And all the house of Jacob was clothed with shame. And after two full years, the king sent the chief collector of tribune unto the cities of Judah. So wait, the land was moved for the inhabitants thereof. That means that the boundaries were changed. And after two full years, the king sent and chief collector of tribune unto the cities of Judah. And he came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude. And he spake words of peace unto them in subtlety. And they gave him credence. And he fell upon the city suddenly and smote it very sore. And destroyed much people out of Israel. And he took the spoils of the city and set it on fire. And pulled down the houses thereof and the walls thereof on every side. And they led captive the women and the children and the cattle they took in possession. And they builded <coughs> the city of David a great and strong wall with strong towers, and it became unto them a citadel. And they put there a sinful nation, transgressors of the law, and, the, and they strengthened themselves there, therein. And they stored up arms and victuals and gathering together the spoils of Jerusalem. They laid them up there, and they became a sore snare. And it became a place to lie in wait in against the sanctuary and and an evil adversary to Israel continually. And they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled the sanctuary. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem fled because of them, and she became an habitation of strangers, and she became strange to them that were born in her. That's so this brother was like, Oh, well, you know, I will bring you into a land that your father's not known. That means that they came from with ships. Uh, you know, in, in the slave ship, Deuteronomy 28, 36. And, and I was like, well, I mean, let me, let me say this, brother. 
I, I, I appreciate the conversation, but let me ask you, would that not still be the same as if I lived in Texas and then I went to, let's say, Utah? Is that a land I didn't know? Crickets. This was a brother. Crickets. I haven't even heard back from him yet. It's the same concept here. Right? They have become strangers, the strange strangers and became strange to them to where they were born in her. So the, these so Jerusalem wasn't even theirs anymore, yet they were still there. And her children forsook her. Her sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Her feast, her feasts were turned into mourning. Her Sabbaths into reproach. Her honor into contempt. According to her glory, so she was. According to her glory, so was her dishonor multiplied, and her high estate was turned into mourning. Okay, and and King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and that each should forsake his own laws. And all the nations agreed according to the word of the king, and many of Israel consented to his worship and sacrificed to idols, right? At the, because they were, they were like, if you don't, you're going to die. Now today, if we say we ain't going to do it, what you going to do? You, gonna, you can't do anything. So this was, this was the beginning of how they colonized us. This is why we hate it. Those spirits, uh, the spirits then are here today. They're, they're here today, and they want justice. That's what we want. We want we want justice. It's as simple as that. It's really simple. We're not looking for forgiveness. That's for you to deal with the Father. You got to repent to the Father for forgiveness. You got to forgive yourselves. We're not forgiving you because that's not our business. Our business is to seek after the Father. And treat people the way you want to be treated. So if you've never forgiven yourself and you're unwilling to repent, how then can we treat you well? Huh? You're not going to treat us well, so then how can we treat you well because you haven't repented nor forgiven yourself? Forgiveness is your business. Don't be looking at us for forgiveness. That's the other thing. Because we haven't had our, because we are not praying for them and praying for their, you know, and we noticed that because the energies that we are not giving to them has been cut off from them, look at how they are. That's why they need to cleave. Like, well, I I ain't cleaving. I don't need to. Don't then. That's fine. Nobody's over here begging you to cleave to us. We don't care. We're moving on up. Are you? And if you say yes, okay, maybe we'll see you at the top. And King Antiochus wrote to the whole to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, and that each should forsake his own laws. And all the nations agreed according to the word of the king, and many of Israel consented to his worship and sacrificed to idols and profaned the Sabbath. And the king sent letters by the hand of messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, that they should follow laws strange to the land and should forbid whole burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the sanctuary and should profane the Sabbath and feast and pollute the sanctuary and them that were holy, that they should build altars and temples and shrines for idols and should sacrifice swine's flesh flesh and unclean beasts and that they should leave their sons uncircumcised, that they should make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanliness and profane, profanation so that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances and whosoever shall not do according to the word of the king, he shall die. Colonization. Because white people, Gentile, heathen alike, has been killing us because we didn't want to be partakers of their sins, of their lawlessness. Oh, the law is done away with. The law is done away with. According to all these words, wrote he to his whole kingdom, and he appointed overseers over all the people, and he commanded the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city, 
and from the people were gathered together unto them many, every one that had forsaken the law, and they did evil things in the land, and they made Israel to hide themselves in every place of refuge which they had. And on the fifteenth day of Chislev, 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 in the hundred and forty and fifth year, they builded an abomination of desolation upon the altar and, and in the cities of Judah on every side. So the abomination of desolation sat in Jerusalem. And look at the destruction that came with it. The abomination of desolation is going to sit again in Jerusalem. And you don't think that the destruction is coming? Nothing new under the sun. Things recycle. It's the same thing. Why? Because the purification has to be. That's why we know blood is the only way to cleanse the land of all the blood spilled. We know this. Oh, let's not talk about the, the you what? You, that, that's the thing. The Gentiles are the only people. The Europeans, the white. Gentile, heathenistic, Khazarian, Germanic, Indo-European, evangelical, Protestant, Catholics are the only people because uh, and the rest of the religions are the only people that sit back and read one verse and pontificate on that one verse for 12 weeks. They don't even read the chapter. They don't even give you context of it. They give you commentary of it. They don't give you, you know, precept of it. And they're to be trusted. They're the ones that we've got to look up to. See, when we were sleep in, in, in deep sleep, when we were unable to read for ourselves and comprehend because we were still low at the bottom, we did look up to Gentiles and what they were saying. And that's why they got commentary all over the place. But now, since we have overtaken the Gentiles in logic, truth, and spirit, now we're not interested in what they're saying. As a matter of fact, we laugh at what they're saying. It's a joke. The cities of Judah sacrificed city by city, and from the people were gathered together unto them many, every one that had forsaken the law. And they did evil things in the land, and they made Israel to hide themselves in every place of refuge which they had. And on the 15th day of Chislev, in the 145th year, they built an abomination of desolation upon the altar. And in the cities of Judah, on every side, they build idol altars. And at the doors of the houses, now, you know that's Catholicism, idol altars. Look at their altars today, full of idolatry. And at the doors of the houses and in the streets, they burnt incense. And they rent in pieces the books of the law, which they found, book burnings, uh, destroying the law, lawlessness, the laws done away with. Same thing, and they, uh, which they found, and set them on fire. And wheresoever was found with any a book of the covenant, and if any consented to the law, the king's sentence delivered him to death. Thus did they in their might unto Israel to those that were found month by month in the cities. And on the five and twentieth day of the month, they sacrificed upon the idol altar which was upon the altar of our Elohim, Eloha. And the women that had circumcised their children, they put to death according to the commandment. And they hanged their babes, their babies about their necks and destroyed their houses. And them that had circumcised them, circumcised, circumcised them. And many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat unclean things. And they chose to die, that they might not be defiled with the meat, and that they might not profane the holy covenant. And they died. And, and, and they were murdered. And there came exceeding great wrath upon Israel. In those days rose up Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the son of Joriab. From Jerusalem. And he dwelt at Modin. And he had five sons John, who was surnamed Gaddis, Gaddis, Simon, who was called Thassus, Judas, who was called Maccabeus, Eleazar, who was called Avram, Jonathan, who was called Aphis. 
and he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and in Jerusalem. And he said, woe is me. I were, woe is me. Wherefore was I born to see the destruction of my people? <clears throat> That's what we, same thing. And the destruction of the holy city and to dwell there when it was given into the hand of the enemy, the sanctuary into the hand of aliens, mankind. Her temple is become as a man that was glorious. Her vessels of glory are carried away into captivity. Her infants are slain in her streets. Her young men were, her young men with the sword of the enemy. What nation hath not inherited her palaces and gotten possession of her spoils? Her adorning is all taken away. Instead of a free woman, she is become a bondwoman. And behold, our holy things and our beauty and our glory were laid waste, and the Gentiles have profaned them. Wherefore should we live any longer? And Matthias and his sons rent their clothes and put on sackcloth and mourn exceedingly. We, this, is, this is what we've been going through. So wait a second. Time out. If issues the people, would they not be talking about? Would this not be bigger than? Whatever they talking about in 1948 or whatever the hell they talking about, wouldn't this be what they talking about? Let that sink in. And the king's officers that were enforcing the apostasy came into the city mode came into the city mode to sacrifice. And many of Israel came unto them. And Mattathias and his sons were gathered together. And the king's officers answered and spoke, Thou art a ruler and an honorable and great man in the city and strengthened with sons and brethren. Now therefore come thou now therefore come thou first and do the commandment of the king as all the nations have done and the men of Judah and they that remain in Jerusalem and thou and thy house shall be in the number of the king's friends and thou and thy sons shall be honored with silver and gold and many gifts and Mattathias answered and said with a loud voice, if all the nations that are in the house of the king's dominion hearken unto him to fall away each one from the worship of his fathers and have made choice to follow the, his commandments, yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. Heaven forbid that we destroy the law and the ordinances. We will not hearken to the king's words to go aside from our worship on the right hand or on the left. And when he had left speaking these words, there came a Jew in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar, which was at Modin, according to the king's commandments. And Mattathias saw, and, and saw it, and his zeal was kindled, and his reins trembled, and he showed forth his wrath according to judgment, and ran and slew him upon the altar. And the king's officer, who compelled men to sacrifice, he killed at that time and pulled down the altar. And he was zealous for the law, even as Phineas did unto Zimri, the son of Salu. And Matthias cried out in the city with a loud voice, saying, Whosoever is zealous for the law and maintaineth the covenant, let him come forth after me. And he and his sons fled into the mountains and forsook that and forsook all that they had in the city. Then many that saw after justice and judgment went down into the wilderness to dwell there, they and their sons and their wives and their cattle, because evils were multiplied upon them, and it was told the king's officers and the forces that were in Jerusalem, the city of David, that certain men who had broken the king's commandments were gone down into the secret places in the wilderness, and many pursued after them, and having overtaken them, they encamped against them, and set the battle in array against them on the Sabbath day. And they said unto them, Thus far, come forth, and do according to the word of the king, and ye shall live. And they said, we will not come forth, neither will we do the word of the king to profane the Sabbath day. And they hastened to give them battle and they answered them not neither cast they a stone at them nor stopped up nor stopped up the secret places saying let us die all in our innocency heaven and earth witness over us that ye put us to death without trial and those rose up against them in battle on the sabbath and they died they and their wives and their children and their cattle to the number of a thousand souls. And Methodius and his friends knew it, and they mourned over them exceedingly. And one said to another, if we all do as our brethren have done and fight not against the Gentiles for our lives and our ordinances, they will now, they will now quickly destroy us from off the earth. 
See there? So what were they doing? They were coming against us on the Sabbath day, on our feast days. They they knew, and they took counsel on that day, saying, whosoever shall come against us to battle on the Sabbath day, let us fight against him, and we shall in no wise all die as our brethren died in the secret places. Then then were gathered, then were gathered together unto them a company of Hasidians, uh, mighty men of Israel, every one that offered himself willingly for the law, and all they that fled from the evils were added to them, and became and became a state unto them, and they mustered a host and smote sinners in their anger and lawless men in their wrath, and the rest fled to the Gentiles for safety. And Metatheus and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars, and they circumcised by force the children that were uncircumcised, as many as they found in the coast of Israel, and they pursued after the sons of pride and the work prospered in their hands and they res- rescued the law out of the hand of the Gentiles and out of the hand of the Kings. Neither suffered they the sinner to triumph. And the days of Methodius drew, drew near that he should die. And he said unto his sons, now have pride and rebuke gotten. Now have pride and rebuke gotten strength and, se- and a season of overthrow and wrath of indignation. Boom. This is where we are now have pride and rebuke gotten strength and a season of overthrow and wrath of indignation. And now, my children, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers and call to remembrance the deeds of our fathers, which they did in their generations and receive great glory and everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation and it was reckoned unto him for righteousness? Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandments and became Lord of Egypt. Phineas, our father, for that he was zealous, exceedingly obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Joshua, Joshua, for fulfilling the word, became a judge in Israel. Caleb, for bearing witness in the congregation, obtained a heritage in the land. David, for being merciful, inherited the throne of a kingdom forever and ever. Elijah, for that he was exceedingly zealous for the law, was taken up into heaven. Hananiah, Azariah. Mishael believed and were saved out of the flame. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions. And thus consider ye from generation to generation that none that put their trust in him shall want for strength. And he not and and be not afraid of the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be dung and worms. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall in no wise be found, because he is returned unto du- unto his dust, and his thought is perish. And ye, my children, be strong, and show yourself men in behalf of the law. For therein shall ye obtain glory. And behold, Simon, your brother, I know that he is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. And Judas Maccabees, he hath been strong and mighty from his youth. He shall be your captain, and shall fight the battle of the people. And take ye unto all the doers of the law and avenge the wrong of your people. Render a recompense to the Gentiles and take heed to the commandments of the law. And he blessed them and was gathered to his fathers. And he died in 140 and six year. And his sons buried him in the sepulchers of his fathers at Modin. And all Israel made great lamentation for him. And his son Judas, who was called Maccabees, rose up in his stead. And all his brother brethren helped him. And so did all they that clave, that clave unto his father, that cleave unto his father. And they fought. That, there you go. And they fought with gladness the battle of Israel. And he got his people great glory and put on a breastplate as a giant and girthed his warlike harness about him and set battles in array, protecting the army with his sword. And he was a lion in his deeds and as a lion's whelp roaring for prey and he pursued the lawless seeking them out and he burnt up those that troubled his people and the lawless shrunk for fear of him and all the workers of lawlessness were sore troubled and salvation prospered in the land and he angered many kings and made jacob glad with his acts and his memorial is blessed forever and he went about among the cities of judah and destroyed the ungodly out of the land and turned away wrath from israel and he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth And he gathered together such as were ready to perish. And Apollonius gathered the Gentiles together and great, a great host from Samaria 
to fight against Israel, and Judas perceived it, and he went forth to meet him and smote him and slew him, and many fell wounded to death, and the rest fled. And the rest fled, and they took their spoils, and Judas took the sword of Apollonius, and therefore and therewith he fought all his days. The Saron, the commander of the host of Syria, heard say that Judah, that Judas had gathered a gathering and a congregation of faithful men with him and of such as went out to war. And he said, I will make myself a name and get me glory in the kingdom. And I'll fight against Judas and them that are with him and set out and set at naught the word of the king. And there went with him also a mighty army of the ungodly to help him and take vengeance on the children of Israel. And he came near unto the going up of the throne and Judas went, and Judas went forth to meet him with a small company. But when they saw the army coming to meet them, they said unto Judas, what shall we be able to, they, they said unto Judas, what shall we be able, being a small cape, a small company to fight against so great and strong a multitude? And we for our part are faint, having tasted no food this day. And Judas said, it is an easy thing for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. And with many, it is all one to say by many or by few. For victory in battle stands not in the multitude of a host, but strength is, is from heaven. They, is, from the Elohim, they came unto us in fullness and insolence and lawlessness to destroy us and our wives and our children for the spoil, for to spoil us. But we fight for our lives and our law and our laws. And he himself will discom, discomfit them before our face. But as for you, be ye not afraid of them. Now, when he had left off speaking, he, he leapt suddenly upon them, and Sarah and his army were discom, discomfited, discomfit, discomfited before him, and they pursued them in the going, in the going down of Bethlehem unto the plain, and there fell all, and there fell of them about eight hundred men. But the residue fled into the land of the Philistines. And the fear of Judas and his brethren and the dread of them began to fall upon the nations round about them. And his name came near even unto the king and every nation told of the battles of Judas. But when King Antiochus heard these words, he was full of indignation and he sent a gather and gathered together all the forces of the realm, an exceedingly strong army. And he opened his treasury and gave his forces pay for a year and commanded them to be ready for the to be ready for every need. And he saw that the money failed from the treasures and that the tributes of the country were small because of the dissension and the plague which had been brought upon the land to the end that he might take away the laws which had been from the first days. And he feared that he should not have enough as, as at other times for the charges and the gifts which he gave aforetime with a liberal hand. And he abounded, and he abounded above the kings that were before him. And he was exceedingly perplexed in his mind, and he determined to go into Persia and to take the tributes of the countries and to gather much money. And he left Lycia, Lysias, an honorable man, and one of the seed one of the seed royal to be over the affairs of the king from the river Euphrates unto the borders of Egypt, and to bring up his son Antiochus until he came again. And he delivered unto him the half of his forces and the elephants and gave him charge of all the things that he would have done and concerning them that dwelt in Judea and in Jerusalem, that he should send a host against them to root out and destroy the strength of Israel and the remnant of Jerusalem and to take away their memorial from that place and that he should make strangers to dwell in all their coasts and should divide their land to them by lot. See there? Colonization. And the king took the half that remained of the forces and removed from Antioch from his royal city, the 140 and seventh year. And he passed over the river Euphrates and went through the upper countries. And Lysias chose Ptolemy, the son of Dormians and Nicanor and Gorgias, mighty men of the king's friends. And with them, he sent 40,000 footmen and 7,000 horses to go into the land of Judah and to destroy it according to the word of the king. And they removed with all their hosts and came and pitched near unto Emmaus, Emmaus in the plain country. And the merchants of the country heard the fame of them and took silver and gold exceedingly much with fetters and came into the camp to take the children of Israel from servants. And there were added unto them the forces of Syria and the 
Syria and of the land of the Philistines. And Judas and his brothers saw that evils were multiplied and that the forces were encamping in their borders. And he took knowledge of the king's words, which he had commanded to destroy the people and make an end of them. And they said, each man to his neighbor, let us raise up the let us raise up the ruin of our people and let us fight for our people and the holy place. And the congregation was gathered together that they might be ready for battle and that they may they might pray and ask for mercy and compassion. And Jerusalem was without inhabitants as a wilderness. There was none of her offspring that went in or went out. And the sanctuary was trodden down, and the sons of strangers were in the citadel. The Gentiles lodged therein, and the joy was taken away from Jacob, and the pipe and the harp ceased. And they gathered themselves together and came to Mizpah over against Jerusalem. For in Mizpah there were a place of prayer aforetime for Israel. And they fasted that, that day and put on sackcloth and put ashes upon the heads and rent their clothes and laid open the book of the law concerning which the Gentiles were, were wont to inquire, seeking the likeness of their idols, and they bought pre- bought the priests garments and the fir- and the first fruits and the tithes, and they stirred up the Nazarites who had accompanied their days, and they cried aloud toward heaven, saying, "What shall we do with these men? And whither shall we carry them away? And thy holy place is trodden down and profane, and thy priests are in heaviness and brought low." And, the, and behold, the Gentiles are assembled together against us to destroy us. Thou knowest what things they imagine against us. How shall we be able to stand before them except thou be our help? And thou sounded, and they sounded with the trumpets and cried with a loud voice. And after this, Judas appointed leaders of the people, captains of thousands and captains of hundreds and captains of fifties and captains of tens. And he said to them that were building houses, that were building houses and were Betrothing wives and were planting vineyards and were fearful that they should return each man to his own house according to the law and the, and the army removed and encamped upon the south the south side of Eminus and Judas said gird yourselves and be valiant men and be in readiness against the morning that ye may fight with the with these Gentiles that are assembled together against us to destroy us and our holy place for it is better for us to die in battle than to look upon the evils of our nation and the holy place. Nevertheless, as many as may be the will in heaven shall so shall he do. And Gorgas took five thousand footmen and four and a thousand uh chosen horse and the army removed by night that it might fall upon the army of the Jews and smite them suddenly. And the men of the citadel were his guides, and Judas heard thereof and removed he and the valiant men that he might smite the king's host, which was in Emmaus, while at yet the forces were dispersed from the camp. And Gorgas came into the camp of Judas by night and found no man. And he sought them in the mountains, for he said, These men flee from us. And as soon as it was day, Judas appeared in the plain with 3,000 men. Howbeit they had not armor nor sword to their minds. And they saw the camp of the Gentiles strong and fortified, the horsemen compassing it round about. And these were expert in war. And Judas said to the men that were with him, Fear ye not their multitude, neither be ye afraid of their onset. Remember how our fathers were saved in the Red Sea when Pharaoh pursued them with the host. And now let us cry unto heaven, If he will be, if he will have us and will remember the covenant of our fathers and destroy this army before our face today, and all the Gentiles shall know that there is one who redeemed and saved Israel. And the strangers lifted up their their eyes and saw them coming over against them. And they went out of the camp to battle. And they were with, and and th- and that were with Judas sounded their trumpets and joined battle. And the Gentiles were discomfited and fled into the plain. But all the hindmost fell by the sword, and they pursued them into Gazara and unto the plains of Idumea. And Azotus and Jamnia, and there fell on them about 3,000 men, and Judas and his host returned from pursuing after them. And he said unto the people, Be not greedy of the spoils, inasmuch as there is a battle before us, and Gorgas and his hosts are nigh unto us in the mountains. But stand ye now against our enemy, and fight against them, and afterwards take the spoils with boldness. While Judas was yet making an end of these words, there appeared a part of them looking out from, a, from the mountain. And they saw that their hosts had been put to fight and that the Jews were burning the camp. 
for the smoke that was seen declared what was done. But when they perceived these things, they were sore afraid and perceived also the army of Judas in the plain ready for battle. They fled all of them into the land of the Philistines. And Judas returned to spoil the camp, and they got much gold and silver and blue and sea and sea purple and great riches. And they returned home and sang a song of thanksgiving and gave praise and praise unto heaven. Because his mercy is good, because his mercy endureth forever. And Israel had a great deliverance that day, but the strangers, as many as had escaped, came and told Lysias all the things that had happened. But when he heard thereof, he was confounded and discouraged, because neither had such things as he had, as he would have, as he would be, Neither had such things as he would been done unto Israel, nor had such things as the king commanded him come to pass. And in the next year, he gathered together three score thousand chosen footmen and five thousand horse that he might subdue them. And they came into Idumea and encamped at Bethsura, and Judas met them with ten. 10,000 men, and he saw that the army was strong, and he prayed and said, Blessed art thou, O Savior of Israel, who didst quell the onset of the mighty man, mighty man by the hand of, the, of thy servant David, and didst deliver the army of the Philistines into the hand of Jonathan, the son of Saul, and of his armor bearer. Shut up this army in the hand of thy people, Israel, and let them be ashamed for their hosts and their horsemen. Give them faintness of heart and cause the boldness of their strength to melt away. And let them quake at their destruction, cast them down with the sword and the sword of them that love thee. And let all that know thy name praise thee with thanksgiving. And they joined battle and there and there fell of the army of the Lysias, about 5,000 men, and they fell down over against them. But when Lysias saw that his array was put to fight and the boldness that had come upon them that were with Judas and how they were ready either to live or to die nobly, he removed to Antioch and gathered together hired soldiers that he might come again into Judea with even a greater company. But Judas and the brethren be said, Behold, our enemies are dis- discomfited. Let us go up to cleanse the holy place and to dedicate it afresh. And all the army was gathered together, and they went up and up unto the unto Mount Sion, and they saw the sanctuary lay desolate and the altar profane, and the gates burned up, shrubs growing in the courts, as in a forest or as one of the mountains. And the priest's chambers pulled down, and they rent their clothes and made great lamentations, and put ashes upon their heads, and fell on their faces to the ground, and blew with the solemn trumpets and cried toward heaven. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the citadel until he could have cleansed the holy place. And he chose blameless priests such as had pleasure in the law, and they cleansed the holy place and bear out the stones of the of defilement into an unclean place. And they took counsel concerning the altar of burnt offerings, which had been profane, what, what they should do with it. And there came into their mind a good, uh, into their mind, a good counsel that they should pull it down, lest it should be a reproach to them because the Gentiles had defiled it. And they pulled down the altar and laid up the stones in the mountain of the house in the convenient place until there should come a prophet to give an answer concerning them. And they took the whole stones according to the law and built a new altar after the fashion of the former. And they built the holy place and the inner parts of the house and they hollowed the courts and they made the holy vessels new and they brought, Let's see. All right, I'm going to leave off there because it goes on and I'm pushing time. So at the end of the day, this is where we are. We are now at the Maccabees. These people, the Gentiles, have come against us. We've come away from them. We separated we're not looking for people to – we're not looking for the stranger. The stranger has to look for us. Um, we are now putting forth uh, our own selves to cleanse our own selves and cleanse our land. And this is the beautiful part about where we are. And we're not concerning ourselves with all of their foolishness, all their ridiculosities. 
We know, and 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 I will say to to everyone that's that's hearing this, finish reading one chapter one all the way through. I think it's sixteen chapters. Read all the way through it. It is an amazing read. It explains a whole lot, even what is going on today, as to why the Arabs are against us, why everyone's against us. Because after Judas dies, his sons raise up, goes to generations. Like, uh, you know, uh, am I my father's keeper, my brother's keeper? Yes, thing is a generational thing. And it, it goes all the way until Jonathan. And the, and the exploits of our people are majestic. And they don't want to put this in there because you heard what they were doing. And there's so much more. Chapter 2 is just crazy. Chapter 5 is insane. Chapter 9 explains a lot. Chapter 15 just is a mind blower. And, like, this is our history. This is why I'm saying, like, it issues the people. Why aren't they talking about this? You would think that they'd be like, yo, the, the Maccabees, this is really what. But they're not even doing that. That's why Gentiles, that's why white people, Gentiles, and heathens alike, we don't care what you're saying because you're not even acknowledging the truth. We don't. You can be part, you can be down, or you cannot. And if you're not, it's okay. It really is. It's truly okay. That's your business. That's your consequence. If you down, be down. Be all the way down. Don't Eminem us. You know? We don't have time for that. And we'll see through it. It won't work. What you, if you, what you'll learn reading this will be that what they tried to do won't work. And now, even now, like this is when we were going into our trouble. Now the trouble is still here, but we're being saved out of it. So who you want to be with? Those that are, that are not going to be saved out of it, or those that who those who will be saved out of it. But Israel, all is good. Be at peace. We rising as we elevate this thing. This thing, like we we see what's happening. We see it. Just stay the course. Maintain. Continue to grow. Continue to to feed. Continue to be with the father, the mother, and the son forevermore. That's all we can do. Much love, Israel, all praises to our Father. Strangers, be down. Much love to you, too. Shalom. Richard Karn here for 50 Floor. Tired of looking at your old floors? Well, I have a solution. 50 Floor, the ultimate flooring experience. All you have to do is schedule a free in-home consultation, and we'll bring hundreds of samples right to your home so you can see them in your own light. Get free installation on all hardwood, carpet, laminate, and luxury vinyl. Do you have a tax refund coming? Invest that money wisely in your number one asset, your home. And for a limited time, visit 50floor.com. Use the promo code PODCAST to save an additional $300. That's 50floor.com, promo code PODCAST. In a world that's constantly changing, you have to move forward to change with it. At Australia University, we see you striving to work harder and go further. That's why we provide you with the tools you need to get there, like offering a brand new laptop when you enroll in a bachelor's program, so you can do your coursework anytime, anywhere. Because our greatest strength is helping you unlock yours, so you can always keep striving. Visit strayer.edu to learn more. Eligibility rules, restrictions, and exclusions apply. Connect with us for details.